Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel where, yes, I have cut my hairs. I had her cut all of my hairs when I went in. She held up the ponytail and she said, are you sure you want shoulder length? And I said, yes. And she held her scissors out and she's like, are you sure? And I closed my eyes and I said, yes, just do it. And she did. And I kind of like it, except she is insisting that I need to let go of my side part. I loved my side part, but we're going to see how long this lasts before I turn it into a side part. Anyway, this is an art channel, so we are going to get to the art now, shall we? I want to share with you some projects that I have made with pigment pens. These are a particular type of marker that are new to me. A month, two months ago, a little, little while ago, I was sent a set of 12 colors in these pigment pens and hired by the company Statler to create a tutorial for them that they could use at a paint and sip type event. That tutorial with a little bit of video is over on my Patreon. So if you want to learn how to do the hummingbird, you're welcome to go do that. You can do it with other markers as well. I'll be telling you in this video some of the properties of these pigment pens that makes them a little bit different because these are a little more permanent than what you might be used to with water-based markers. At the very end, I'm gonna talk a bit about what is coming on Saturday because I'm gonna be doing a live cast for the first time in like forever because yeah, I don't do live videos very well and very often, but I thought since my channel is crossing the 150K mark, it's time to do a little celebrating. But before we get to that, let's do the projects and then I'll meet up with you at the end of the video and we'll talk about Saturday. So I'm gonna try three styles with these pens. Like, I just wanted to see how I could push them. And the set that I have here is the whole 36. They come in this box but they do have sets of 12s and other things too. I'll link to a bunch of it in the description down below. But these are brush pens like every other brush pen that you've experienced probably. The nibs on them are a little bit smaller potentially than other pens. A stiff to medium stiff type of, of nib, I would say. It's not super soft and squishy. The names of the colors are listed right under the word Statler. They're not listed on the caps or anything, but the caps are roughly the same color as the pen, so they're pretty easy to figure out. Now, I made myself a chart. I laid my markers out so I could do them in roughly rainbow order, but my black one ended up being a straggler over there in the corner. I will post a picture of this chart on my website, so if you want to see what colors are available, then you can check that out. I did three different techniques because I wanted to see what I could push these markers to do because of their specific properties. So some washy, some realistic, and some more impressionistic. I tried that just for fun. So we're going to start with washy and blendy because this is probably where your head goes when you think of these kinds of markers. But these are a little bit different and I'll explain why. I'm doing a drawing first in a waterproof pen. If you'd like to purchase this as a downloadable, you're welcome to. However, I would just say it's real easy to draw, so feel free to just do that. But I'm going to put some color in half of one of the leaves and then use some water. And then I'll rinse my brush. So I'm using clean water to drag lighter color and then rinse it again to get even lighter color to just keep going down the entire leaf to get a blend. Now you might think, well, Sandy, that's not rocket science. I've done that before with all of my water-based markers. What's different here? Well, what's different is when these dry, they're going to dry permanent and they're going to dry quickly in many cases, depending on the surface of the paper that you're using, they might last a little bit longer, and I'll show you one in a few minutes. But on watercolor paper, these dry fairly quickly, and you need to just do the water right away. You don't want that to just sit there. So it there are things that you can use that to your benefit for, but if you're using it like this with water, you're just going to want to be strategic and make sure that you get all the water movement when the ink is wet, when that pigment ink from the pens is still movable. 
when I'm working on something like these little berries, I found I could do a whole bunch of them at once and then just get the brush out and water them all out and it worked just great. But for the leaves, I tried to do them each a half a leaf at a time. Now the tutorial that I did for Statler is over on my Patreon and it's for this hummingbird. This was done on canvas, one of those little pre-prepared canvases. And the ink on these remained mostly water soluble a little bit longer than on the paper. So, you know, experiment with different papers, different surfaces that you have. Now, impressionistic. This is where I really wanted to exploit what these pens can do that others might not. And I found this great photo. It's fall season, so it might be inspirational to you as well as it was to me. And I wanted to recreate this, but in a more impressionistic style. So what I'm doing is just creating first for the yellow, just some underlying shapes, because what I can do with these is put color over top of them. And the yellow, once it's dry, is not going to move. Remember, I said it's going to be permanent. So with water-based markers, if you were to go over them, sometimes you would end up with something that's going to start to look like mush because your next color is going to drag the color that's under it. In this case, it's not going to do that unless you do it like immediately while the underlying marker is still wet. And when it dries quickly, then it dries quickly and that's all there is to that. This happens to be Canson XL paper. It's got a smoother surface and I did have to wait a little bit longer because it stayed damp a little bit longer just because of the surface of the paper. But I started layering in just blocks of color. I'm literally just making marks of the color on the paper. And just to see what would happen if I did something that felt a little more impressionistic or pointillistic. And could I make this look like a fall tree? Now I can use this blue pen if I happen to touch some of the purple or the orange or the red with this blue pen. I will get a layer over top of it from the blue, but I'm not going to get the color underneath dragging around. So if you've struggled with some kind of technique that you're working with and have it, had your color drag all over the place, these might be exactly the markers you're looking for because of the properties they have. That's why I love having all kinds of different supplies because everything is good for its own special thing. You could try this with water-based markers, but just know that you're going to be constantly cleaning off your marker a little bit if you're dragging color around into different areas. So here I just kept putting some of that blue sky, those little pops of blue sky in between the branches. And then in the bottom section, I just started putting more blobs of color and allowing myself to just squint at it so that I could sort of see where this was headed and start putting in the darker colors over top. I just wasn't sure how this was going to work. Did I need to put the darker ones on top or the lighter ones? But I figured probably the darker on top since everything's going to layer on top of everything. And then when it came to putting the branches in, I was using the blue and the purple markers instead of even the black so that I could keep the kind of light craziness of the color. I debated whether or not to make those branches into the pointillist dots as well. And that might be something that would be interesting, but I also liked the fact that it was nice strong lines with all of this delicate little blobs of color flying around it. I just thought it looked really cool. These markers, you can lay them down so you can press harder and lay them on the side of the marker tip in order to get a thicker line, or you can press really lightly and get some of these really feather light branches. And you could even switch colors for some of the branches, use a lighter purple or a lighter blue or something if you wanted. Uh, lots of different ways that you can approach doing this. But I'm going in between the branches, so I'm not just putting the branches over top of all the color. I'm letting some of the color break through the tree trunks and that sort of thing to give it that look so that it looks like you know, the, the branches are within all of that color. And it just came out so super happy in its color. I might, you know, kind of see if I can bear to chop this in half and make two tall cards out of it. it might be kind of fun, but really pretty. And the colors in these markers are just super vibrant. So that brought me to 
realism. You know me, I'm, I'm a realist. That's just what I like to do. So I decided I would try these markers on some watercolor paper as a real drawing, like a realistic drawing. And I found this beautiful photo by somebody named Lydia May over at Paint My Photo, my favorite place to go get pictures. And I just started putting color in. And I'm again, exploiting the properties of these pens that if I wanna have a really soft area in between them, then instead of trying to do it while it's wet, I'm gonna put a color that's gonna work in between them. So when I wanna blend an orange and a yellow, I might actually put a yellow ochre in between them as a blending color and just started kind of playing around with it, layering colors heavy in here because I have a lot of contrast in the photo and I wanted to see how that was going to actually work out. Now, as I was doing this, one of the other things I was thinking about was what to do in terms of that background, because with these pens, one of the cool effects you could get, and I opted not to for this piece, you could like draw all of the details into this. And then when you get to the background, go all splashy with it. And by that, I would probably, and on this kind of paper, because it's cold pressed paper, I would probably scribble it onto a piece of plastic acetate or something, and then paint with these colors. Because they're really vibrant, you can get some really interesting vibrant colors but you can also mix something that looks like that murky greenish brown using some of the bright colors that are here. But since this one came out so great, I didn't want to risk it. So I did end up not putting a background in at all because of the way these came out. But the leaves themselves just came out gorgeous. I loved the fact that I could take some of these colors you know, there's not all that many in the neutral colors here, but I could take some of the neutral brown colors and find one of the places where there's a spot on a leaf and just scribble over top of it. And even though the color underneath of it wasn't wet, it just seemed to, you know, it, it liked the treatment of the paper underneath. It liked working on top of other layers of ink or color or whatever's in these pens. And it's, you know, they're pigment pens. I think it's pigment ink, but I never know. You know, a lot of people say that there's uh, watercolor in watercolor markers, and there's really not watercolor in watercolor markers. A lot of them, uh, they're actually inks in there. So I think that's probably what's in most markers are just various types of ink, even if they're water soluble. So we call them water-based and watercolor. So as I'm finishing up these leaves in here, I was playing around with the darkness and you know the, just the values for the leaves that were in between these bittersweets. And bittersweet is apparently a you know some kind of uh, an invasive species. I was reading because I was like, what are these? I thought at first that maybe they were like some kind of um, those little rose hips that are left behind on rose bushes or something. And apparently, no, these are a thing that people are trying to get rid of. And I'm like, oh, they're so beautiful. Even though they're all kind of like wrinkly and shrivelly, they feel very much like fall because of that in my mind. Now, I'm trying to create the highlights on these bittersweets. I'm using, you know, I started by just drawing in the lightest pinks and then a darker pink around it. And then going in with more of a, a red red a true red around it and then adding shadows on top of that so that gave me some build up to those really light colors in the highlight but i am not using water as you can see i'm just drawing with these pens and letting the colors the transition in the colors work instead of trying to get them to be blendy blendy and yet it still as you can see looks like i've blended with these and i haven't now, there are some times when in like these berries in particular, where the color might still be a little bit on the damp side underneath. The, the reds did seem to last a little bit longer here, but the color that went on top was, uh, you know, a brown in the really darkest and then a purple in the second darkest kinds of color areas. And it was just really interesting to see how those can still form a really interesting red color even though they're not red markers. Because you can see from the range there, there's not a huge range. I mean, it's only 36 colors, but you'd be surprised at how much you can do 
with a small range of colors when you know enough color theory to be dangerous, which is what I love to teach. So if you want to you want to learn how to be dangerous with it, then pop on over to my teaching site because I've got a lot of classes in a lot of different mediums where you can learn color theory. This last one is very dark, so I kind of skipped almost directly to the red to be able to, you know, create some some of these dark shapes on top of them with the dark brown marker and then I'll go in with the purple along with it and creating the shapes of the berries because they have kind of these creases in them just I don't know these, these are just really interesting to draw and wouldn't say that these are a must-have marker necessarily unless some of these techniques are appealing to you I'm gonna really love working on them for more realistic drawings but they're also really fun for the impressionistic and layering colors and they also have the option to do some more washy and blendy looks all right so let's talk about the live cast I am notoriously bad at live casting. <laughs> I just have technical problems from time to time. So I just want to give you a heads up. If for some reason the link that is on my YouTube channel right now and the one that's going to come out in my newsletter Saturday morning before it starts and if the link on my blog, if all those links don't work, then just go to my YouTube channel and just refresh it and as soon as I can figure all of it out I will start a new feed I might have to do that if I screw up the first one I'm gonna try not to screw up the first one so there's there's that I also have no idea what I'm gonna be able to see of your comments and I'm really hoping I can work that out but I am also bird of little brain when I'm making art so I want to make sure that I get your questions. So if you have questions you'd like me to discuss while I'm working, then throw some in the comments on this video or throw them in the comments on the other video on the one for Saturday. And then I will have a list that I will print out on paper in case I can't see comments because that terrifies me. Okay, now let's get to what we're going to be doing. The first portion of the video, while everybody's you know, arriving and getting set up. I am going to be showing the cards that I have received in the last month-ish, something a little longer maybe than a month, um, sympathy cards for my mom's passing because they're beautiful and I just want to share them with you. So if you've sent one and you want to see yours on camera, then if you don't make it really early in the video, then you can watch the replay for just that portion of it. I'm also going to be sharing some ATCs because I sent out 150 and I got like, I think I got three back. So I'll share those with you as well. And then we're going to get started on the artwork. The supply list is in that video. I'm linking to that video in this video, but it's over on my channel as the place where hopefully the live stream is going to happen. We're going to work in watercolor pencils. We're going to do a drawing. There's a reference photo that we're going to be working from. And I have some special treats for my watercolor pencil peeps. So you're going to want to come and stay tuned for that. If you'd like to try the hummingbird tutorial in your water-based markers, then click on the link to Patreon in the doobly-doo down below. Any patron from a dollar and up has access to that one. And if you would like to join my Patreon as a $10 and up patron, then you get the monthly real-time watercolors. I will link to Patreon and to the video for Saturday that has the supply list in it, as well as the supplies used today in this video. And I'm gonna stop talking so you can go get back to your day. And I'll see you again next time when we're gonna be live. Please tap that like button before you go. It means the world to the channel. And get out there and create something every day. Bye.